Hi guys, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you how to install the View Composer within your VMware View environment. So I already connected with RDP to my vCenter server and at my vCenter server I have copied the install files for the View Composer. So let's install them. So keep in mind the View Composer is installed on vCenter server. While the Composer is installing, I'm going to show you my View dashboard, my View administrator, and I want to add a pool based on uh, automated. And you can choose between two different flavors, dedicated or floating. And I want to use the View Composer linked clones, but there are no vCenter servers available with View Composer enabled because I'm installing it while we are talking. I don't want a Java update right now, go away. So uh, the installation is running. You have to create an empty database on your SQL server in order to install the View Composer. So let's take a look at my database server. It's running at three. And I'm actually running uh, a separate database server based on SQL 2008 and I created an empty instance for the Composer and the empty instance must be configured with SQL authentication. So the only thing you have to do is create a user account with enough writes to create tables and read and write from the database and you have to uh, enable the account for SQL authentication and create an empty database. Let's see what I created on my SQL server. Connect to it. And once it's connected, I can see a list with all the databases I have created on this SQL server and one of those databases is the view database and as security you will see the view user. Here it is. So let's go back to our installation which is running on the vCenter server. Next I have to read the end user patent agreement. Okay. Next I have to, to read the complete license agreement and I have to accept it. Next choose the location for your files and this is the part where you can do your ODBC DSN setup. So you create an ODBC DSN at the system tab and I already created the view ODBC but I'm going to show you the, you the configuration. So view, view SQL 2008, the account is view, I'm using SQL authentication, I'm putting in the password and at the final step you will see that I'm connected to the view database and I can perform a test and the test is completed successfully. Okay. So we can use the view ODBC connection with user view and I put in the password. Okay. So this part is running fine and we leave the so port default. Otherwise we have to change it at both sides. Oh, and we create our own SSL certificate. I don't have signed certificates in my environment. So let's continue with the installation of the View Composer on the vCenter server. And once this part is done, we can go back to our View Administrator and we can enable the Composer for our vCenter server. But first of all, we have to wait until this installation is finished. Shall I pause for a moment? So the installation is nearly done. I'm start the, the services are starting again. The product must be registered. You can also check if the service is running. When you go to services, it will show up just like a normal service within uh, the list of all your services. And once the service is up and running, we can do a double check at services. The product is installed. So let's see, VMware Composer, there it is, right here, it's started, great. So the product must be registered, it will take a few extra seconds, but I want to be sure that the Composer is uh, installed on my vCenter server. Finish, 
and we're ready. We don't have to reboot. So let's go back to our VMware View Administrator. And when you go to servers, you can configure your vCenter server. So simply click the edit button. And this is the place where you can enable the view composer. You have to add an additional user account. And this account will be used to add and remove virtual machines from the domain. So it must be an account that uh, has the right within a Windows environment to add and remove uh, computer accounts on the domain. Simply hit OK. And then the VMware View server, connection server, will detect that the composer is running on the vCenter server. It will take one or two minutes. And they are using the same SOAP ports, the same SOAP port we also configured while installing the composer. Now it's enabled. Let's go back to the pools. And let's see if we can add a new pool based on automation. So we're going to add an automated pool. We can choose for dedicated or floating. This only means that a certain user is pinned down to a certain desktop. So when you are creating a floating pool, uh, you're not sure if the same user logs in uh, two times in a row, it will get the same desktop. So I will choose for the dedicated desktop. And now we have the option to create full virtual machines. This one is based on a template or create few Composer linked clones. And with VMware Composer linked clones, you have one virtual machine that is put in snapshot mode, then a replica is created, and the replica will serve as the base disk for all your future new virtual machines. We have to give it an ID, just uh, call it exam prep, because that's what I should be doing now for the VCP DT. And we can also uh, give it a display name, test, select a view folder. I already created some view folders just for practice, but I'm going to choose for the production view folder, a description. And then um, the ID is not right because you don't, you're not allowed to put in frames, strange characters. Okay. So the next decision we have to make is the state, the connection server restrictions. Do you want to put any tags in it? Uh, the remote power policy and all these kinds of decisions like PC over IP, the maximum resolutions, the flash quality, you can put in everything right here. Then you have to decide on how you want to redirect the user data. Do you want to use a persistent disk and which drive letter must be used? Or do you want to redirect to a non-persistent disk? And then we can click next and uh, we can enable provisioning and stop provisioning on an error. And we can also put in a naming pattern. And the naming pattern can be something like desktop, uh, bracket open, and bracket close. And you can also put in the number of digits that are allowed to use in this number. The maximum number of desktops, the maximum number of spares, when nobody is logged on yet, but when somebody logs on, the desktop is immediately ready. And the provision desktop on demand. And I'm going to put it on two. Finally, when we have put in all these figures, we uh, can continue. And we have to choose a default image, a de default virtual machine image, and uh, a folder for the virtual machine settings. And for the resource settings, we can choose a resource pool. So the default virtual machine image will be, and this is a bit of a problem, I didn't prep any virtual machines. So just let's pick one, this one. But there are some errors with it. So. I think you have a clear idea how the composer works right now. You have to select a resource pool and once you're done, the virtual machines will be automatically created. And when the pool is up and running, your users can log on. Okay, this was Eric Sloof live on antipro.nl. Eric Sloof is signing off and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.